Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Who Dares Wins. Um, wow. Um, so it's been wild since the last episode. Around two weeks ago, I interviewed my friend Antonio. And since then, we've had the coronavirus. Um, wow. I really... So usually the context of this podcast has been for me to inspire hope, inspire you to feel good about taking risk, about maybe thinking about God in a different way than you've thought about him in the past, um, and, and or um, to encourage you to go after your business, go after your art, go after your creativity, to take risks. Um, I believe much of what it means to be a Christian is um, is is like living by taking risk, right? Um, sometimes we don't know if a person needs prayer, but you ask them anyway, and it turns out they do. Or sometimes, um, you know, some of us in the Christian community we believe in healing. I believe in healing, and sometimes you'll you'll hear from a friend or you'll have a feeling that that maybe they're 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 hurting somewhere in their body, and you ask them, hey, how do you feel? Like, does your foot hurt? And they'll be like, yeah, it actually does. Can I pray for you? And so you take a risk in that moment, and you pray for the foot. So I had been wanting to do an episode talking about that, talking about healing and talking about stepping out on faith, taking risks, um, you know, um, to trust God, to step out. Man, but um, I just feel in my spirit in the last few days, definitely since Sunday, um, to have an episode where I just really be vulnerable. I feel like that's most of the time that I've been with this podcast has been me me being vulnerable. And um, I just really want to, like, say um, my heart goes out to everyone and uh, everyone who's going through stuff and um, wondering where they're going to find food, thinking about the future, how long is this going to last? Is this even real? Is it a government conspiracy? <laughs> is this the prophetic end? Is this the end of, like, is Jesus on his way back if you're a Christian? I mean, there's just so many thoughts and so many things to think about. But I, um, I mean, I've been, like, hopeful and hopeless at the same time. I'm just going to be real raw and honest on this episode. Um, and I feel like that's where we're at and that's where we need to be because we can encourage each other. If we're just like, yo, like I felt the same way. Okay, cool. Let's like, let's, let's go after that. And like, and like, you know, find hope. Right. And like find light in, in what seems to be so dark. Um, but yeah, like I've been in between hope and hopelessness and it's been wild. So um, just to update you, I was in Florida for a while. I was visiting family and friends and uh, God was moving and he was doing great things. And I saw hope and encouragement coming to my stepfather. And um, and it, it was really beautiful. He recently was diagnosed with leukemia and now he's... Um, you know, he's actually doing much better. It's uh, the, not, not, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Not leukemia, um, Parkinson's, so much different. Parkinson's. Um, and um, we started praying for him and encouraging him. And and, uh, and basically what happened is um, he started to get better, right? So around that time that um, we were praying for him, I, uh, I just felt that we should pray for more people. I wanted to step out there on my faith. I wanted to challenge my faith. Um, and so anyway, it, it led to some cool conversations and prayer and like me and my dad, my stepdad, like connecting in a way that we hadn't connected in the past. I saw God moving in my family. So, um, so, uh, so then eventually, while I was in Florida a couple weeks ago, on my way there, there was this joke, right, where, like, all people with masks on, you know, coronavirus, like, yeah, whatever, it's going to go away. 
we uh, deal with this stuff all the time. Who cares? No one cares. No one cares, right? No one cares. And like, no one cares until we care. That's the, the crazy thing. So basically, um, not basically, just it's the way I talk. Um, so what's so crazy is that I remember a day or two before I was supposed to come back to New York. I was in Florida. I was like, man, I really don't want to come back to New York. It's like maybe this coronavirus thing will shut down the the um the the um the airports or whatever. And I mean I was just saying that like in a it you know, silly way, you know. So the next day I see um the Utah Jazz guy um um oh man, I can't think of his name. He's an amazing center though. He was defensive player of the year last year. Um, well, anyway, he gets coronavirus. The whole NBA season gets cl- shut down. We're like, whoa. My friend and I and my parents are just like, whoa, NBA season shut down. Then um, we see other things start started shutting down. And I'm like, wow, maybe I won't be flying back to New York tomorrow. Turns out flights worked. I get to the airport. No one's there. No one is there at all. So I'm like, oh, my God. So I tell my friend, um, man, I really don't want to go back. But I guess I got to go back. And um, I felt like I needed to go back to be a part of my church community. And I don't know. I'm from here. I had to go to work. I, none of us thought that it was going to be more serious than this. Maybe what some of you that are smarter than I do your own research but um anyway so I came out to New York the next day I was at work it was crazy there was like no customers I've never seen New York like this at all not even with 9-11 I felt like with 9-11 there were still people out we were hugging each other we were encouraging each other we were going to ground zero this is so different, guys. This is so different. I started to start thinking to myself about my favorite zombie movies. I don't mean to go dark, but I just started thinking about my favorite zombie movies. And the one, my favorite zombie movie of all time is 28 Days Later. And probably Night of the Living Dead, the original in black and white. Um, but in, in 28 Days Later, and even Resident Evil Part 1, man, there's something spooky about that one. But in, res- in 28 Days Later with Cillian Murphy, check it out if you haven't seen it. So it's it's a government-created virus. And uh, it eventually leads into like a bunch of people becoming zombies, all this stuff. And Cillian Murphy wakes up from a coma, I believe, after 28 days. And in those 28 days, everything changes. He walks out, there's like no one. <laughs> right he's like walking and walking and walking and then he meets these people and then they're like all this stuff and then, like they're trying to escape the country really um to get to another area where there is no virus um it's real kind of bleak kind of apocalyptic but i thought it was interesting because as i was on the plane there was no one no one in the airport and every time I would think I saw people, it was someone that worked at the airport. I had never seen anything like that. Granted, when I got there, I was, you know, I was trying to get my flight. And so I got there and I was just like, oh, hi, are, are you guys boarding? And they're like, yes, are you Mr. Ross? And I said, I am. They're like, we've been waiting for you. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, really? I'm like, it's, it's early, actually. And she, they're like, yeah, it's early, but no one's here, so. We're just boarding. And I'm like, wow. And I'm like, okay, can I go get a coffee and I'll come back? And they're like, absolutely, go get your coffee and come back. No problem. So I come back and they're like, how was your coffee, Mr. Ross? And I said, it was very good. I knew something was up because when when things are like that and like people are that hospitable, there's something else going on. There's like, wow, we need to up the ante. Like, we need to really, like, you know, help people feel good right especially with airlines airlines it's a lot of money you know what i mean um 
So anyway, um, I board the plane. I get on the plane. I'm talking to my friend. I'm talking to my mom. And I'm like, there's no one on the plane. <laughs> there's no one on the plane. Maybe 15 people tops, except for first class. First class was full. Isn't that funny? Anyway, so first class was full. And then we fly in and we land in New York. And like, I land into Newark Airport. And like, you know, people are getting off there and like, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. I get on the train and the train is packed. The train is packed, right? And I'm like, wow, Newark don't care. Newark don't care, right? Newark, like Brooklyn, we turn it up. But uh, I was also like concerned because it's me. By that time, I started to be like, wait a minute, like, I don't want to be touched, blah, blah, blah. And I just came from like spending time in Miami and like West Palm Beach and Lake Worth Beach. And I was like, man, man, I wish I didn't leave. Right? Because, like, you get off the plane and you're like, oh, man, this is my home, New York. It's disgusting, <laughs> you know? But I love New York, but it's, like, disgusting. And so, anyway, so um, I'm just, like, creep. I'm freaked out. I'm creeping out. I go right from the airport to work. It takes me two hours to get to work. I get to work. We get to work. No one is there. <laughs> it's so creepy. For hours, we're like trying to find stuff to clean. We're disinfecting stuff. We're doing everything we can to stay open. Um, uh, my my job is Think Coffee in the city. We have a few locations, and like we're all about sustainability. We're all about you know meeting the customer where they're at in the community and giving back. And so I was really, really in thought about what's going to happen. We get through that day. We finish up. I go get some groceries. The next day I go to work. There's no service at um at, at church, I believe. Um, no, wait. I came back. I came back Thursday. Church was Friday. Then I went to um, work on Saturday. Saturday was empty. Right. And then Sunday, by Sunday, we weren't meeting in in buildings anymore. Churches were live streaming. And so I streamed church from my home. And and at that point it was fine. It was like, you know, we were encouraged. We're all on Zoom. We're like, okay, cool. We're stepping into this new virtual re- you know, future. Prior to that, on Friday, I didn't get to that, but on Friday was our last meeting together. I go to uh, Life Center Church in um, down by the Wall Street area. It's called Life Center NYC slash J Hop Justice House of Prayer. Um, <clears throat> and we're like praying and praying and praying, and and it's like wow, we're like maybe one of the only churches meeting. I'm sure there's other churches that we're meeting, but like we're praying, and I'm like wow, we're together, we're loving each other, we're ex- we're respecting social distance, you know. But like, man, it's it's um, is wild because by Sunday, we weren't meeting, and I was happy. I was excited because I felt like God had been calling us to go into this future for some time. But I'll be honest, doing church from home, it wasn't the same. I still got encouraged. I felt connected to the body. But it wasn't the same. I went to work later that day after service. I finished streaming service while I was on the train. When I got to work, no customers, hardly any customers. I normally make 50 to $60 in tips, sometimes $70 in tips in coffee, which is like kind of unheard of unless you got a banging coffee shop. But we have a faithful, faithful clientele and customer base. And um, and and it was just kind of sad because as people came in, I don't know if you felt this way, but as people came in, I, I really was like, wow, I don't want to be here. Like, I want to be at work, but I don't because I'm so concerned about germs. I'm so concerned about, like, Maybe this person has it and they don't know yet. And like 
all this stuff. Meanwhile, I'm a man of faith. I believe in God. I believe in the power of the blood, right? We believe that the blood of Jesus covers us from all sins. In the book of Exodus, it talks about the Passover, right? Um, you know, and, 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 and so like Moses was like, let my people go. And they're like, no, 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 no. And so there's all these different plagues. And eventually there was a plague of the firstborn dying or infant death or something like, like I don't know, it's like kind of, well, it's like a lot, right? So anyway, so, but like children were dying or firstborns or something like that, right? And so Moses was like, no, God said, put the blood of the lamb over the doorposts. And when you put the blood of the, of the lamb over the doorposts, your house will be overlooked. It will be passed over. So I started to think about that. I started to pray. And I said, God, Lord, I, I pray that you pass over Think Coffee. I pray that you pass over some of these organizations and restaurants and businesses that need to survive for the sustenance of, of, um, of uh, customer service jobs and food service jobs and then low worker jobs, right? But they're not low worker jobs. They're they're um they're they're very much um they're very much um sorry I was getting a call. <laughs> um but they're very much um not low level jobs. If anything, right now they're like the most important jobs we have. They're the ones providing our groceries. They're the ones providing the resources we need, providing the pharmaceuticals to the pharmacies. We are so, um, I'm just so thankful and grateful. So thank you so much. If you're listening and you have one of those jobs and you're driving UPS or you're driving the truck or the dump truck or you're bringing groceries to stores, um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, because, um, man. It's just crazy. I mean, you're putting yourself... I feel like we're literally in the movie Bird Box. Like, if you haven't seen Bird Box on Netflix, it's like, you should check it out. It's like crazy. It's like, you go outside, and unless you're blindfolded, you're going to be, like, infected. Like, it's just retarded. It's crazy. But, anyway, so, I fast forward. So, no customers, right? And then, I'm like, what are we going to do? Oh, my God. So, my coworker says to me, Hey Jay, what do you think is gonna what do you think is gonna um happen? And I was like, I don't know, man, but I'm praying and I, I encourage you to pray too. You see, sometimes there's these opportunities where you have an where you have a golden ticket to really expand yourself and 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 go to another level. I'm not saying believe in my God or believe in Jesus Christ. Although I would encourage you to, I think running with Jesus has been the best decisions I've ever made in my life. I'm just saying, though, there's no time like the present to pray. There's no time like the present to say, God, I don't know what's going on. It's coronavirus. I think I know what's going on. I'm doing a lot of research. But sometimes, God, it really just gives me anxiety. Sometimes it just makes me feel like hopeless. Sometimes I feel like I'm in a zombie movie, like I'm in the first 45 minutes of a zombie movie, and I don't want the other, you know, hour and a half or whatever it takes to get to two hours in a movie, <laughs> um, hour and 15 minutes, I think. Um, so, so you might be thinking about that, and so you just pray, you know. So I was talking to my coworker, and I just said, "Hey, man, like I pray for you. I pray for our business before we open, and I pray for Jason, our owner." Because without Jason, we won't have jobs. And so, um, and without Jason, these these organizations that we support and these women that we take care of in Ethiopia and these things that we do, you know, they're not going to get the resources that we can provide, you know. And um, and, and these homes that we're building in Colombia and in and, and, um, and, and other regions, um, the money that we give to the Henry Street Settlement, the money we give to the Hudson Guild, the money that we give to um, this other organization that's near my location on 16th Street um, that helps um, kids needing adoption, I think, um, or like, uh, or or looking for 
to be adopted. Um, I could be wrong, but there, we, we give to so many organizations. And on top of that, Jason pays us like a living wage. He pays us $15 an hour, you know, like with the tips and everything included up to $15 an hour. So it's like really like unheard of to make a living from coffee. But we have mid 20s, early 30s, and 40s uh, year old people making a living from coffee. And so I just want to encourage you if you have the means, go a Google search and just, just be generous to the organizations, the churches, the coffee shops. You can be generous to mine. <laughs> Um, that really blessed your life. And like when we were before this coronavirus happened, like we counted on them for certain things like coffee or food or groceries or information like news and things of that nature. Um, I just, I just really encourage us to be generous in this time. Um, so fast forward more. Um, I told my friend that I prayed with him. And I said, I encourage you to pray for yourself as well. And later that night, we went home. And later that night, I found out that we were um, that we were going to um, be laying off people. And so he was like, what do you think we're going to do? I said, I don't know. And he said, man, he's like, you know, come to think of it. Every time I work with you, I think I make the most money. I said, that might be true. I'm not sure. But I can tell you this. That when you're a man of God or a woman of God, you know, God gives you favor. He shows up and he shows out. So I, I, I feel like sometimes some people, maybe they notice that on you. Maybe, maybe there's like a calling on your life. Maybe um, God wants to use you in this time. Maybe you're creative. Like I have a voice, but I'm not, I wish I could like do illustrations and all that cool stuff. But I'm not really wired that way. I'm, I'm wired to talk. I'm wired to talk, hopefully. I mean, hopefully you're you're engaged with what I'm saying. Because this is such an off-the-script episode. And I really think my episodes from now on are going to be like this. I mean, I might have a message. I might not. But I just think it's a time for, for me, a guy like me, to be honest because I really believe in Jesus. Like, I really believe in Jesus. I really believe in what he can do and, like, who he is, what he represents, and, and, and the power of God. I've seen him change my life. But I also am very much aware of how I'm like, this is so different than anything I've ever experienced or any of us have ever experienced. This is a global situation. And... It's time now more than ever to connect. And I apologize because I'm not connecting with everyone like I think I should. I, I, I'll be honest. Sometimes it's really hard for me. But I, I just want to encourage you that if you have that capacity to go do it. If you're encouraged, go do it. There's amazing like podcasts that I've been listening to and following on Facebook pages called Prophetic Nation by my friend Kalel. So awesome. So like when I post this, I'm gonna um write in um in the in the comments section or whatever, like however you do it, like I don't know. Wherever I can put the information, I'll put the link for Prophetic Nation and I'll put the link for some other organizations and, and podcasts and thinkers that have been um really helping me and encouraging me in this time. You know, I, I believe in faith, so a lot of where I go for encouragement is faith. So, um, you know, if you're into that, you know, you can check that out. Um, and I encourage you to, I really do. I mean, it's, it's like moments like this, um, where you really, really can have an encounter with God where you can really have an encounter with God. So just summing up my story, I'm surprised I've like, been able to talk for like 20 minutes and like not even have anything, no script, no plan, just thoughts that I've had. And it's usually how I am. I'm like a shoot from the hip kind of person. So I just think a lot 
I do a lot of research and then I just go for it. Um, but I um, just want to encourage you. I also started a, another podcast as well called um, The Father's Heart. Um, you can check that out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Anchor. S- same one as I'm using for this. And on that one, it's more geared toward night. So um, you can listen to me tonight. I'm going to be reading from um, this book by Michael Koulianos called The Jesus Book. And um, I just really feel like it, there's no, it's like now is the time to hear from the heart of God. Now is the time to hear from the heart of God. And the cool thing is, is that what I've been learning is that God's heart is for you. Like God's heart is for you. It's for me. And so in this moment, um, I just want to Welcome back to another episode of Who Dares Wins, Um, catching you up on all the latest on the coronavirus. No, just kidding. Just catching you up. (laughs) Hey, so yeah, like I was saying, sorry, I got cut off. Um, I just wanted to say like in times like this, it's like so imperative that we like run to Jesus um, and, 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 and run to each other. So I just wanted to wrap up this um, kind of story and like update because um, I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm like, I think a lot and then I don't post content. Maybe you're like that. Like you think a lot, you have a lot of dreams, you have a lot of ideas and they don't come to fruition. If there's anything, it's right now is the time for us to do it, to create and to put it out there. You know, I'm doing my part. You know what I mean? Like, hey, maybe you know how to write songs. Maybe you know how to draw. Maybe you can do illustrations. Maybe you know how to film so you can make short movies inside your home in creative ways. Whatever it is, like, just do it. Um, I dare you to do it. I, I, who dares wins, right? <laughs> um, so just to wrap up the story um, and just, like, this whole coronavirus thing up till, like, now I guess or like a couple days ago I'll do another episode tomorrow um because originally I was going to only do once a week but times like these you learn to live again right Foo Fighters um so is this I told my co-worker I pray um and then he said yeah it's like, wow, I never thought I never thought you would do that. And I said, yeah, before I go to work, I pray for the work. I pray for us. And I pray for Jason, the owner. And there's actually another time in my life when I worked for another coffee shop where the boss, the owner, asked me to pray before we opened. And when we opened that day, we made more money in that one morning shift than we made entire days like entire morning to night. So, you know, I do believe that there's a power in prayer. I do believe that God listens to us. I do believe that um, he loves you. Um, Like I said, I have another podcast called The Father's Heart. It's geared toward nighttime. I mean, you can listen to it whenever you want, but it's geared toward nighttime um, to listen to before you go to sleep. And um, uh, it's just... Like me using my voice, I have a soft voice to kind of like maybe ease you into going to sleep, maybe ease you into the promises of God, ease you in to um, good news, good news. So um, before I was cut off, um, I was saying that like tonight I'll be reading from the book, the Jesus book, um, Fall Recklessly in Love with Jesus by Michael Koulianos. I believe now is the time to hear from the Father's heart. He wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that he has this under control. He wants you to know that we will overcome. We will overcome. I dare you to step out on faith. I dare you to journal. I dare you to write. I dare you to start a podcast. I dare you to tell your story. I tell you, I dare you to move. (laughs) 
switch foot. <laughs> I dare you to move. Um, thank you so much for listening. This has been an episode of Who Dares Wins. I'm just going to close with some prayer because I feel like this is just imperative that we close in prayer. Father God, I just thank you so much for everyone who's listening. I pray that you would bless them and keep them and hold them in your arms and give them hope and belief and faith that we will overcome and we will overcome greatly. Um, The human spirit is stronger than anything. There's no virus that can ever overcome the human spirit. But even more so, there's no virus that's ever overcome the Holy Spirit. And so, God, we thank you for Jesus, who has the power to command the wind to retract, who has the power to speak to the storms and they still, who has the power to speak to the water and it opens up and Moses walks on dry ground. We know who you are, God, and we release your power in such a time as this to lift up your people and everyone who's listening, whether they believe in you or not. God, maybe they're just listening because they're my friend. God, I speak life into them right now. I speak faith into them right now that they will overcome. So I just thank you, Jesus. And I dare them to step out on faith this week. I dare them to believe in you tonight. And tune in later tonight for Father's Heart. It's going to be awesome. God loves you. He's got a great plan for you. He wants you to fall recklessly in love with his son, Jesus. Thank you so much for listening and so much for your support. I love you guys. This is my way of giving back with what God has given me. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. Love you guys so much. Um, Check out the links that I add um, when I post this later. Thank you so much. God bless you. I dare you to move. You've been listening to Who Dares Wins. Peace.